And during my talks at diverse companies, I showed pictures of pristine nature, illustrated how animals live together. But the most important message I wanted to share was I was allowed to sit in the middle of the living room and my presence didn't bother them. And that was such a profound experience for me. Sitting there for hours, for days, watching coyotes chase a fox that had just stolen a piece of meat from them. Or young deers roaming the forest in small groups. And that was such an inspiring experience for me that I wanted the managers to feel like that. And my listeners could already immerse themselves in this world of wilderness, but they were keenly aware about their own roles, that as managers and leaders. And while they were pondering how to derive successful business models from nature, I asked myself, how can I reach their hearts? In December 2012, wolves were taken off the endangered species list in USA. And already in December, the same year, she wolf and two other back members were shot dead at the border of Yellowstone. In the Lama Valley, wolves were no longer seen. They have disappeared, a major setback. I started talking to people about their connection to wolves and what really moves them. This summer, I did 500 conversations about wolves and I met people on the street. It was absolutely spontaneous and people had no time to think. And my first question was, what comes to mind when you think of a wolf? And everyone I spoke to had either an image or opinion about the wolf. And 45.6% described his appearance or behavior. It was a wide range from beautiful to dangerous, but it was quite realistic. 17.2% connected the wolf with nature, wilderness, and freedom. We still 16.2% associate the wolf with fairy tales. Our children still grow up with fairy tales. Why? So we need new stories for our children. But what it was quite exciting for me that a striking number of people, 12%, have already encountered a wolf. Most of the responses, responses were of curiosity when confronted by a wolf. And even those who responded that they would be anxious about a wolf encounter, when it happened, they were indeed fascinated. And 3% reported their wolf encounter as mystical. In areas where wolf populations are known to live, 7.2% of the locals reported seeing a free roaming wolf. Surprisingly, people from town followed with 4%. And in rural areas with no wolf population, 1.6% reported having seen a wolf. But my present question was, what attitude do we have to a wolf? And to find out, I asked the 500 respondents 
if you could give a message to a wolf, what would it be? And this question seemed to trigger people's emotions. And you can see their message to the wolf, 22.4%, be careful, stay away from humans. They are dangerous for you. Or 18%, keep it up, stay alive. Don't let yourself be driven away. 17%, stick to your prey. Better stay in the forest for your own safety. 8.4%, all the best. A healthy life, welcome back. And 5.4%, keep peaceful and only 5.2% have a critical message to the world. Stay away, you have no place here. And 4.8%, we won't hurt you, we can live together. So really many people are worried about the wolf and they even provided advice how the wolf could have a better life with us humans. And likewise, people also offered a perspective of the wolf's point of view. And these are the results. The message from the wolf, 26.4%, I won't hurt you. We have no evil in mind. 25.4%, you are taking away my living space. You destroy nature. Give me some space. 20.8%, don't come too close, leave me alone. And 14.8%, please let me live, don't shoot me. <clears throat> so it was really encouraging to see that people were able and willing to slip into the skin or the fur of the wolf. And the results of the study suggest that a vast majority of the people welcome the return of the wolf. And they even desire a harmonious coexistence in a healthy natural environment. But nevertheless, despite these positive signs, the public discussion is still polarizing in countries like Germany. The topic of wolves is still sensitive. So, I begin doing art events. My first art event was a special exhibition at the Berlinische Galerie with a piano concert. The people should get a feeling about the real wolf in its natural habitat. The images are of wolves playing, hunting, caring for their family. And the images combined with the music creates an inspiring atmosphere where people relax. We also saw offered whiskey. I thought the wolves are strong animals, so we need strong drinks too. And the people were attending as human beings. It was very emotional and people really appreciated this new approach. And here is an impression, a short impression of the piano concert. Yes, it was really joyful to see people in an emotional and inspiring mood about wolves and nature. 
so more art events followed, such as a wolf night in the ice world in Berlin. Here we got a glimpse about the condition in that wolves live in. This club was literally made out of ice with 10 degrees below zero. It was quite fun. And people also went away with something to think about and reflect on. Meanwhile, back to Yellowstone. Shivol's daughter has returned to the Lamar Valley. She continues her mother's legacy. The Lamar pack already expanded to five wolves, and they are doing well. But once the Lamars had an unsuccessful hunt, and after this defeat, they met on this hill, and they didn't leave this place for three days. They played. Wolves love to play. It strengthens family bonds. And wolves also have a sense of fair play. They wrestle and chase each other. They bite gently so that no one is insured. But the point of all this playing is not to win, but to keep the play going as long as possible. So wolves train their skills by having fun and no wolf is too old to play. And in between, they slept, and they strengthened themselves and spent time together. The next day, they were successful. And every journey is so inspiring to me, so I kept playing with my images too. So rust, liquefied metal, and paint, were added to the photo. And the rust symbolizes the constant change and transcendence that counteracts with the captured moment. And the rusty surface structure lends the image more depth and strength. And sometimes the transfer medium of liquefied metal is used to echo the motif. And a special process is used to allow the photo and the career medium to flow into one another. A unique piece is created. And it honors this unforgettable moment. So carrying these pictures, I returned to the companies and public organization. This is the natural habitat of decision makers, hunters, and politicians. And we were not always welcomed so warmly. At some companies, the wolf didn't even make it through the front door. But more on that later. The images were displaced in 10 organizations in Germany and Austria over a time frame from se about several weeks and 45 interviews and 120 conversations took place about the wolf and the image. And the wolf even came along. So in the distance, I have this wolf here too. <laughs> what is your first impression of this wolf? 
also our feelings will be very different for all of us. Wounds can trigger our emotions. And our emotions are influenced by our perception. And our perception changes with our knowledge about the object we are looking at. And this all happens in loops and is mutually dependent. But however different our feelings may be at the moment, art is able to give us a good feeling. Not always, but think of a film. When you go to a cinema and you feel sorry with the protagonist half the time and think after the screening, oh, I had a good time. Our reward system is activated with aesthetical things and discovery. And having emotions make us feel alive. And even though the wolf is a very difficult topic and is highly controversial in public discussions, where emotions are running high, 39 or 45 um, participants had a good time when gazing at the image. I have some quotes. Um, it's the same image. When I walk by, I'm happy. I always leave the door open so I can see him. The longer I look at him, the more alive he becomes. He's like a window to the wilderness, very mystical. There is something calming and respectful about him, cozy, relaxed aura, connecting with leisure, would like to hug him, has a calming effect. Five people were not bothered by the wolf, but they didn't engage with it further. One woman felt as though she was being watched and that made her uncomfortable over time. In the best case, the image speaks of itself. So this image was displaced without additional information. But sometimes the story beyond can change how we look at the image and the meaning we take away. So please let us do an experiment. What is your first impression when you look at this wolf? Yes, please. Yeah, good. Another impression of the wolf. So here is the story. This is the female wolf of the Morley's pack. And this pack was formed when six wolves were brought from Alberta, Canada in 1995 to Yellowstone as a part of the reintroduction. And these wolves found the Lamar Valley to be rich with everything they needed. But one year later, the Truitt pack displaced the Mollis pack from the territory. And these wolves moved south to Pelican Valley. But in winter, elk migrate out of the valley, leaving the wolves. So in need of food, they figured out how to successfully hunt bisons. That was quite a challenge for them. But over time, they grew with their prey. And now, these wolves are the strongest wolves of Yellowstone. So, how is your impression now? Did it change? How? So, sometimes stories could help to get a better understanding about the context of the image. And can you imagine? Hosting a wolf in your office. The pictures were placed in a wide variety of locations, and 11 participants had the wolf directly in their office. 
and six of them said that it was rather difficult for them because the wood did not have anything to do with the work context. And this assessment was reinforced by the 120 conversations, which I found quite funny because I was only invited to the companies to tell them how to apply the strategies used by wolves in work. So the wolf was particularly at home in rest areas, in busy corridors, or at the entrance. And it was also called the window into the wild or a view into nature. And people stopped again and again, and sometimes they even enjoyed their coffee together with the wolf peacefully. And in the companies and public organizations as a location for art, there is another designated uh, advantage, time. In museums, people usually spend less than a minute looking at a single piece of artwork. Most of them spend no more than five seconds. And here the image is integrated in daily working routines. And with longer and more frequent viewings, you can discover more details. And this can change the meaning of the image. There are also some quotes. He has become more familiar to me over time. It has almost taken on human traits. If you walk past it often, you still notice it, but you don't actively engage with it anymore. It changed by becoming something familiar. Art is also a good way to have conversations. A managing director, oh, this is the context where the booth were displayed, and a managing director has placed this wolf directly in his office. And he wanted to establish this wolf as a symbol for unity in his company. And he had over 80 conversations about the wolf and how the image was made. And he said, I'm quite sure that I've made many people think, but now they need a little time to integrate the new wolf into their previous form of socialization and ways of thinking. My friend Marianne, a judge, brought the wolf into the hearing room. Sure, here people are intensively dealing with their own problems and notice the wolf less. Also, it was really present. And her assistant wrote, the wolf looks a bit threatening to me. Above all, his eyes and the direct eye contact with him contribute to this impression. However, it is interesting to look directly into the eyes of such an animal. I have not observed that parties or lawyers have been intimidated by the image of the wolf. However, I can imagine that the nervousness of one or the other party is increased by the threatening wolf. The different perceptions are also evident here because one lady said to the same image, yes, I've already seen the picture because the door was open. At first, I thought it was inappropriate. Many people have to enter the lion's den anyway. When a, but when I took a closer look at the wolf, his eyes radiated calm. You can do it and confidence. And Marianne also said that at the beginning of the corona pandemic, people were more aware about the surroundings. And so they noticed the wolf. But now everyone lives in his own world again. And 
How attentive are we really to our surroundings? I put the wool on an easel in the middle of downtown Berlin and waited what would happen. And I did a small video about that. And in the end of the video, I'm in the botanical garden. I'm really curious, what is your impression about the behavior of the people? Sorry. Oh, the piece of the video, the most important piece. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm sorry because that was the highlight of the whole video. Um, yeah, maybe you can do the video later again. Or should we try? Not. Yes, yes, here we are. <laughs> the highlight of the whole video. <laughs> Okay. What is your impression about the, how people react to the image? I would love to discuss this later. Yes, uh, for me, it underlines again the need of calm in order to be able to engage with profound subjects. And we can also see that our attention and perception have been really afflicted with our digital lifestyle. We no longer look at our surroundings, hardly notice them, but we take a photo if we like something. So sure in town, you have to focus and perceive things selectively, and of course, the image is able to assert itself 
hardly. But as soon as the surrounding is coming down, people calm down too. And the same in the company. And having the opportunity to interact with wild animals can also enhance our empathy and understanding of nature. And admittedly, um, foxes in Berlin, they have already become house dogs, but people from the surrounding areas come to Berlin especially to see a relaxed fox. So if you never see wildlife, people begin to create their own wild animals. And there is a lot of speculation in there. So back to the companies, back to the rules. Companies and even more public organizations provide very good conditions to connecting with the image. It's recently quiet, people are focused, and are more willing to engage. And sometimes <laughs> it's even a welcome change to the everyday work. And it's possibly to look at the image again and again. And over time, the wolf almost became a living being. And this is the same wolf in his younger age. But as great as the conditions are in the companies and public organizations, the wolf finds it difficult to gain access there. Modern art adorns the premises today. Art is not meant to distract people from the work. And no one wants to make statements to the outside world. And the wolf is often too lively, polarizing, and political, a creature like that. So what can we do? In our forest, wildlife is trying to survive, while our spaces become more and more technical and sterile. I think we need more windows to the wild, especially in places where we spend so much time. And we need brave windows. And art can, is able to um, bring openness and interest to the sometimes deadlocked discussions. And it can sustainably keep issues in consciousness. So art can remain in our hearts and minds. And combining art with information and education campaigns is still very effective too. And you should bring children to art, engage children in creativity. Art is also a good way to get children become more aware and creative. And in this case, Children have modeled a wolf paw, and now they are printing tracks on the image. And, but this group was about 25 children, and they had to find a way to work together. So they played by the rules of a wolf pack. And they were aware what the other was doing. They didn't destroy other tracks. They didn't even speak to each other. They really fit into what was happening. They could immerse themselves deeply into the world of wolves. And they were very calm and focused and the adults couldn't stop modeling wolf paws. And these children are living in a very small village in Brandenburg. And 11 of these 25 children have already encountered a wolf and no child was afraid. 
But you know, children are very open and sometimes they give you a peek into their soul. And they said they're really sad. They're really sad that at the opportunity to see a wolf or wildlife is so rare. But in the same village of all places, few people started a campaign for a wolf free zone. And yeah, we should inform the public, provide information, bring them into their creativity, and also involve them in decision making processes. There are so many different opinions out there, so there is a need of scientific based information. What else can we do? Train our perception in nature, with art, in silence. Go into nature, perceive it as it is. It's all about intensity. How deep do we get involved? And how close do we let people, nature, animals get to us? And the most important thing, never stop playing. Play wherever you can. No wolf is too old to play. We can train our skills by having fun. <clears throat> and in the end, maybe you know that already, the Netherlands and Germany are connected now because a female wolf of the East Germany and a male wolf of the Western Germany met and together they wandered to the Netherlands. They settled down and now they are the parents of the first wolf pups in Netherlands. So keep playing, keep playing like wolves. So thank you. Thank you for your very inspiring presentation. Um, in the past two days, there has been, um, um, I think, a tendency to um, emphasize the, the, the value of emotions uh, in, into our work as and social scientists and policymakers. And I think art can play a very valuable role in that. And we also talked about in some sessions about uh, trying to look at human wildlife conflict from the perspective of the animal. Yes. Do you think that, I, I think that art could play a very significant role in trying to uh, help in that Yes, I think so. Absolutely. Because, you know, um, I really talked to 500 people and I met them on the street and almost no one um, said, no, I don't want to talk to you because the topic of wolves and wildlife is such important and people really notice that. And they had no problem to slip into the fur of the wolf. And I had... Uh, I have the number here because of I had also the number about how many people didn't slip into the fur. And that was only stuck 4.8%. And all other people had no problem to slip into the into the fur of the wood. So that was really encouraging for me too. So, and you know, the answers are very emotional and you can really get uh, a peek into the soul of the people because it's really honest. And the um, conversations were, have been very spontaneous. So people didn't think about the just told that what they are thinking about. Yes, thank you. Yes. I wonder, you, you, thanks for your talk. Um, 
these beautiful images by Bob Landers made in Yellowstone National Park is, uh, um, is of course a very, very typical view of the wolf, whereas the wolves in Germany and the wolves in the Netherlands, they yeah. move through a different kind of landscapes. Is, yeah. there, is there a reason why you chose to use these pictures rather than, let's say, the pictures that are made right now in Europe in wolves roaming through landscapes where humans, humans live as well? I could imagine that the, that the emotional response would be different. In, in Yellowstone? No, you are using pictures from Yellowstone oh, to no, talk to uh, people, the, in, to uh, talk to uh, people uh, in Germany. Yes, oh, thank you for your question, because no, I didn't use uh, images from Yellowstone in the companies. I use our hoops <laughs> oh, okay. here. Okay. Sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, yes, okay, so there is one, but you are right, there's one black wolf um, from Yellowstone, but what's one, the only, only one image. All other images were of wolves in Europe. Yeah, thank you. Because that's only the journey I took because I have been in Yellowstone over eight years. And now I'm in Germany in Lausitz and I conducted a new pack. So that's why I show the images of Bob Landis. But thank you for your answer. Yes. Thank you. Yes. During uh, your timing uh, of, you know, <laughs> Showing the picture in different places, did you encounter any uh, hunters, farmers? Yes. And, uh, and yeah. was their perception? Yes. Um, yeah, we can talk about that one hour and more. But it was really quite exciting because the perspective changes with the generations. And so I also talked to three farmers where the young people took over the farm and they really had problems with wolves. And now the young people, they run the farm now, they did a new modern fence and new protection and they have no problems with the wolves now, but not, uh, uh, not all the time. Some farmers really have uh, problems with wolves but some farmers really don't have any problem with the wolves. One woman told me that she was quite lucky to come a morning to her cattle because there was just a wolf standing inside <laughs> where the cattle are. And he was running through and she was very happy to see him and nothing happened. <laughs> but Otherwise, another man told me he has a farm too, but he has no sheep, he has cattle. And he said, and he had never had problems with wolves, but he said, I can't sleep anymore. I'm dreaming of wolves. And I'm sure when I see a wolf, I shoot him. And so the, yes, the emotions are very, very different towards wolves. And so it's, always we have always to inform and to talk to people because even in germany you know in the lausitz in 2001 the first wolf pups, pups were born so it's a really long time to get familiar with these wolves but there is still discussions about wolves and sometimes it really works good because uh, in, in Lausitz, um, you know, there are houses and every second house had two sheep in front of the door, free roaming. The wolves came and now no house has any sheep anymore, but they have no problem with that because they discovered that they have more tourism now. But in Brandenburg, there are a lot of wolves too. Now they have really a problem and they want to have new rules to shoot them. So it's always a balance and we have always talked to people. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I found it very interesting and, and um, uh, maybe uh, as a useful tool to reach this um, general public that usually, you know, it's so difficult to, to get. Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder, why and if you got any uh, comments uh, saying that you only show one side, one image of the wolf, which is particularly positive, 
life of a wolf is not just playing and yes. uh, <laughs> nice picture. Wolf kill. Yes. And this is one of the major uh, issues, you know, the image that um, uh, simulates negative perceptions. But it is it's part of its life. It's normal. Yeah. And we should be able to show this as well as a normal um, part of yes you are, it's absolutely true so in the concert we also showed hunting and fighting um, but in the companies i wanted to inspire people for the wolf so they had only a wolf portrait uh, it, i do mainly portraits of wolves and so why i did this kind of portrait because people said oh that's a absolutely new approach because they know wolves from newspaper killing sheep and that's the image they have so i wanted to to show a positive side too because they are not familiar with positive images about wolves so but you know you're absolutely right and during a concert or an exhibition they are also shown hunting and, and fighting wolves yes Yes. And thank you. I was just wondering on a similar sort of basis to you using the portraits, do you think you might have had a more positive response in the companies had the images been wolves playing? Just I just think if, if I walked into any office and there was a huge picture of any animal, even a human staring at you, maybe it's just the eye contact that makes you yes. feel uncomfortable rather than the fact that it's a wolf. <laughs> Like, was it just portraits? Mm -hmm. And do you think that the portrait rather than the actual animal could have influenced people's reaction? Mm. I'm not sure if I understand your question right, but I try to answer. <laughs> because, yes, I choose the portrait so that people have the possibility to look right into the eyes of the wolves. And I didn't want to have situations because that's more influencing every image is influencing our perception i know but uh, showing situations um there is uh, yeah maybe more influencing on the other hand i um in the uh, before i put the images into the companies i was looking about the reaction of people and people react really even more to portrays and to about eye contact. And so <laughs> I thought uh, that would be a good possible that people are that images are able to touch them. So that's why I choose portraits. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. It's a really great presentation. Um, and that uh, example you shared where you told us the story about the images of wolves yeah. after it completely did change. I mean, really? Image. So I was wondering in the company, did you also include information or did you only include the image and how did you decide which would be appropriate? Yeah, in this time, this study, it's not study, uh, <laughs> it's a lie. So uh, in this time, I didn't um, tell a story because, you know, uh, the corona pandemic, it was very difficult to get the image into the company. And uh, it was even more difficult to speak to people. So uh, we didn't do an event, but it is planned now, uh, an event in the Lausitz, because two companies in the Lausitz had this wolf. And now we plan an event with all the participants to tell the story and the situation about wolves in their area. So we will see. But um, we did not uh, give additional information. But in one public organization, people really wondered why a wolf? <laughs> and, they are really familiar because this is a public organization that always has exhibitions, but they have not been familiar with a realistic image. 
So always people ask um, about this image. And so the um, manager put the information <laughs> inside the room and then people were happy <laughs> about that. So, yes. Hey, thanks a lot, Jana. Thank you so much.